True or false? Columbus didn't discover America. The Vikings did. True. Leif Erikson was the first European to land on present-day Newfoundland, but he and the Vikings abandoned the territory due to hostile natives, whom they called Skraelings. Erikson's first landing in the New World was approximately 500 years prior to Columbus and used a northern sea route that hugged the coastlines of Iceland and Greenland, making the journey exceedingly easier to navigate. Meanwhile, Columbus's mid-Atlantic voyage was a precarious and unknown venture that took far greater navigational skills and courage, which explains why his crew grew progressively more fearful, for if they passed the point of no return, they would not have enough food to return safely home. Most importantly, no miraculous alert or widespread announcements were made by the Vikings during those five long centuries of near silence, proof that their ventures yielded nothing. Nothing at least until Columbus truly made the announcement of discovery for all Europeans to learn about and celebrate. Europeans had only speculated that an Atlantic passageway to India or China might exist. They had no knowledge whatsoever of the two huge continents in the Western Hemisphere, which would one day be called North and South America. Therefore, it was solely due to Columbus's discovery that a divided world was united, joining Eastern and Western Hemispheres for the first time in human history. It was an earth-changing event that ranks with only a handful of miraculous milestones. True or False? Columbus caused the genocide of the natives. False. Those who make this claim echo the words made by the Dominican missionary Bartolome de las Casas, who said there were originally three million natives on the island of Hispaniola when Columbus landed, and that just 50 years later, only 300 remained. Fact. Columbus was not even governor at the time of those hostilities, which escalated under the governorships of Roldan, Babadilla, and Ovando. More importantly, the widespread deaths of the native population occurred long after Columbus had already sailed home to Spain, and were not caused by abuse, but rather by disease, a pandemic due to European strains of viruses that the natives' immune systems could not fight off. Moreover, population numbers recorded by Las Casas were deeply flawed as three million people living on the small island of Hispaniola defies even the populations of major European countries at that time. Encyclopedia Britannica cites the population for the entire country of England to have been 2.6 million people in the 1500s. As such, La Casas's claim that the small island of Hispaniola originally had three million people is also a gross exaggeration. True or false, Columbus enslaved the natives. True, Columbus did bring slaves back to Spain. However, first, the slaves he captured were hostile warriors which conformed to the rules of war at that time, yet his sovereigns released them. Second, under the direction of Pope Alexander VI, Columbus was to enslave those who were godless idolaters. This was an unfortunate custom of the time, but one that was widespread and utilized by other religious groups as well. Therefore, we shouldn't judge Columbus by today's standards. True or false? Columbus owned slaves. False. Columbus never owned a slave in his entire life. However, the Dominican priest Las Casas did own slaves. He freed them years later, but then advocated the enslavement of black Africans instead. True or false, Columbus treated the natives harshly. False, Columbus's very first encounters with the Arawak and Taino tribes were very friendly. They bartered goods and he befriended Guacanagari, the tribal chief. Many historical accounts verify how Columbus always approached new tribes with peaceful intentions and actions, such as the time when canoes of natives rode out toward his caravel. Columbus ordered his men to play lively music to welcome their guests, yet the natives wielded their bows and attacked his ship. In no first encounter did Columbus act as an aggressor, 
but when threatened, he did respond with force in self-defense and to establish the precedent that they would not be easy prey. True or false? All the natives were peaceful and friendly, but were ruthlessly attacked and enslaved by Columbus. False. Not all natives were peaceful and friendly like the Arawaks. Their enemies, such as Cayenabo and his local tribe on Hispaniola, or the Caribs on neighboring islands, posed great threats throughout the Caribbean world. The Carib natives were deadly cannibals, flesh-eating tribesmen who threatened the European white man as much as their own kind. Hostile Caribs killed and ate the explorer Giovanni da Veranzano. As Columbus's son Hernando recorded when speaking about a native chief who boarded their caravel, he then prepared to go ashore, inviting the admiral to a feast. He then complained about the Caribs who had captured his people and took them away to be eaten. But he was greatly overjoyed when the admiral comforted him by showing him our weapons and promising to defend him with them. This not only confirms Columbus's friendly relations with the more peaceful natives, but also shows his willingness to defend them. Many other extant sources by various eyewitnesses expound upon Columbus's attempts at friendly interactions, as well as the brutality of the Caribs, who warred with other tribes as eyewitnessed by Dr. Diego Alvarez Chanca, who stated, These people raid the other islands and carry off all the women they can take, whom they keep as servants and concubines. These women say that they are treated with a cruelty that seems incredible. The Caribs eat the male children, and as for the men they are able to capture, they bring home those that are alive to be slaughtered and eat those who are dead on the spot. They castrate young boys they capture and use them as servants until they are men. Then, when they want a feast, they kill them and eat them. These atrocities and many others by the natives are all well documented in From the New World by Peter Martyr, Historia General by Bernardino de Sahagan, the letters of Hernan Cortes, and other primary sources. The New World was not paradise when Columbus arrived, nor had it ever been. True or false, Columbus was a poor governor. True, Columbus was first and foremost a great navigator and explorer. His interest in governing did fall short. But as Columbus stated, he was expected to rule over a population of natives who were naked, lived in huts, had no modern tools, and were not acquainted with European customs or laws. As such, it was an extremely difficult task, unlike governing any town or city in Spain. Moreover, the new wave of Spanish settlers were supposed to make the New World their home, to raise families and build churches to live a good Christian life. However, most were hellbent on panning for gold and abused the natives. True or false? Columbus cut off the ear of a tribal chieftain. False. Columbus defended his native Arawak friends and hunted down their enemies who had attacked them. With an expedition of 200 men, Columbus eventually captured and brought back the chieftain to stand trial. It was Alonso de Hoyeda who cut off the chief's ear as punishment for his crimes. But it's key to note that it was Columbus who set the chieftain free. True or false? Columbus raped natives. False. There isn't a single historical text by the natives or the Spaniards at that time that stated he raped anyone. This blank and unverifiable slur has no point of origin and is resoundingly false. True or false? Columbus was put in chains and brought back to Spain. True. Columbus was arrested and put in chains by the then governor, Francesco de Babadilla. Babadilla was incensed that Columbus had arrested and hung Spanish settlers. However, they were all criminals who were tried and hung according to Spanish law. This mattered little, as Babadilla disliked the admiral personally, and this arrest was an unlawful vendetta. When Columbus arrived before the king and queen in chains, they were mortified. 
They denounced Bobadilla's actions and immediately released Columbus. The sovereigns also punished Bobadilla and removed him from his governorship. Therefore, the story of Columbus's arrest was not due to any criminal act, but has been taken out of context by some people today and used unjustly against Columbus, who was, as noted, immediately exonerated. True or false? Columbus's mission was to be a conqueror. False. Columbus's mission was twofold. First, to find a western passage to reach India and China. This had become a necessity ever since the Muslims had conquered Constantinople in 1453, which severed their trade route to the east, and that in turn impelled the Spanish Empire to find a new route. The Spanish Empire was deeply in debt and desperately needed gold, spices, and riches to save their economy. Second, to Christianize the Indians, the Muslims' infiltration and attacks on Christendom throughout Asia and Europe had spurred King Ferdinand to instate the Inquisition. Many Christians had lost the faith and Pope Alexander VI needed to rejuvenate and strengthen the religion with new parishioners. An additional impetus came from the great Khan of India himself, who requested that his people be introduced to the Christian faith. As such, Columbus, who was a devout Christian and had even become a monk himself, was driven to ensure the very survival of Christendom, which was threatened, and to secure gold for his sovereigns, to ensure that the Spanish Empire would regain solvency and not crumble and fall. True or false, Columbus was the destroyer of the New World. False. As noted, Columbus's discovery opened the Western Hemisphere to the East, uniting a once divided planet. The native tribes he encountered were a mixture of friendly and hostile tribes, as warfare and even brutal practices of cannibalism, scalping, and human sacrifices existed. The New World was not paradise when Columbus arrived, nor had it ever been. Likewise, centuries of wars had ravaged Europe, proving that all mankind shares in ugly practices, bar none. Although Columbus surely made mistakes, he was a subordinate of a duplicitous king. Many others took part in this sweeping story, but Columbus has been the scapegoat for the sins of numerous men in his day and countless others in his wake. That's why it's imperative that information about Columbus be presented by reputable sources before carelessly passing a death sentence on the greatest explorer to have ever sailed our oceans. One who opened up half the world to European settlers who eventually created the greatest nation on earth. One dedicated to freedom and advanced technologies that landed man on the moon, developed electricity, automobiles, planes, computer technology, miraculous medical procedures, and global communications via the internet, which offers instant access to sharing thoughts and information with all peoples on the planet. The advent of the United States is a blessing, not a curse. And if George Washington is honored as the father of this great nation, then surely Columbus must be honored as the grandfather of America.